You guys heard of this Alex Hormozzi dude? He's uh, pretty, pretty good. And in today's video, I'm gonna go through a video that is a little controversial. People are talking about like, oh, Alex, you, your morning routine's dumb. This video isn't about a morning routine, or is it? Or is it? Let's jump into it. What's the millionaire morning routine? A lot of people ask these questions. If you look on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, so-and-so's morning routine. The five things so-and-so does the moment he wakes up. They this is so true. Everyone on YouTube's just like, hey, what's this billionaire's morning routine? Hey, uh, what was Steve Jobs' morning routine? Rest in peace. What was it Barack Obama's morning routine? Uh, people don't probably ask that one. But they ask all these arbitrary questions about who's this guy? was his morning routine. Let's let's be successful like Elon Musk. Well, how does he get up? Elon Musk doesn't really sleep. I don't know if you guys have checked this out, but Elon Musk barely sleeps. First of all, that's not a great not a great way to be feeling good, let alone being successful. But here's the thing. Actually, I think Hormel is going to say it better than me. They think that there's some magic pill or some super five-step thing that's going to somehow get them to do the work. At the very end of this video, I'll give you my morning routine. Everything that I do between when I wake up and when I work. We have to define what productivity even means. Hey, see what he's about to do here? He's about to slide the entire thing. This was a very smart thing that he does. He goes like, if we wait till the end of the video, I'll actually tell you it. But first, let's put the definition of productivity in this video, because people need to know. They just need to know. If they're watching this video and you know, he's the business and productivity guru now, because he's gonna tell us. I wanna know what uh, productivity is gonna be. Let's go, Alex. Productivity is getting more done per unit of time. People who move faster in life don't actually move faster. They get more done per unit of time. I had this guy reach out to me and he's like, dude, I got this coach. He's got me doing like morning walks, red lights on it, and I do a cold plunge and I do my gratitude journal. He's like, by the time I'm done my morning routine, it's like 11 a.m. And I was like, do you think you'd be more productive if you just prospected for three hours a day? He's like, yeah, probably. And I was like, doesn't sound very productive then. What's interesting. That's a very good point. Um, it was also very good coffee. The thing is, Productivity is kind of on a scale, right? Or it's more on a spectrum. I don't believe anybody's definition of productivity is the same, but I do think his fundamental reason of like productivity existing is correct. You're getting more done per unit of time. However, more done is arbitrary, right? Are you getting more done in order to live a life where you look jacked? I mean, this dude is jacked like Alex Ramosi. Also, I just switched the video to 4K. Gee, that was awful to watch. Or are you doing more in order to build a business, to be a better dad, to be a better mom, be a better child? What are you trying to do from a productivity perspective? So I do agree with this definition of getting more done per unit of time. However, if that person was to be you know, doing that morning routine that finishes them at 11 and their goal is to be like Zen or something, I guess, yes, they're being more productive. Thing is that people approach the problem of the fact that they're not getting enough done per unit of time, and they think that I should add more things that are not getting things done to become more productive per unit of time. That doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't. I completely, it, this is why Alex is one of the smarter people on the internet. He is making a very valid point here. I have made a morning routine video before, and, and this is what I talk about often with times. So like, for example, my name is Jordan Peterson. I like talking about make your bed. And while I do believe that it's a great sentiment, I also am up and working within like 20 minutes at like 4.30 to five in the morning. I feel like it's pretty arbitrary what which one of those things is like. It's like he, his whole point is let's make order within your day. All right, how's this? Uh, What's more being orderly than being at a very clean desk by like 4.45 in the morning? It's the same thing. Now, you can make an argument for or against it. It's just a point like you don't need, need to do all these arbitrary things. Like I literally wake up crone and go, uh, cause there's a singe in my head cause it's so early in the morning. Press the button that I set before the night cause my Keurig is set up. That was awful English. Slap myself if I'm recording, wash my hair, stare at myself in the mirror and imagine I'm gonna die because hashtag stoicism. And then I sit down and work and it's like, you know, 4.45 and I'm like, all right, this is it. It doesn't really mean anything if you're doing all these arbitrary things when you wake up. Like, yes, if I meditate, I will argue like taking a five minute meditation when you wake up might be a good idea. Also, you might fall back asleep. Just a thought. Right? Why do people not think that way? Because people don't define the terms that they use. But if you define productivity as the amount of work you do per unit of time, you probably would stop doing a lot of the things that you're doing that aren't work. When people give you their advice for how to become productive, think, is this adding things that are not work to my calendar of the work that I am doing? How much leverage am I getting from that work? So I can multiply even further the work that I do. You order your tasks in order of the leverage that they have. The definition of leverage is you get more output per unit of input. If I do a little bit and I get a lot, I have a lot of leverage. You simply have some things that you get more money per period of time and less money per period of time. That, that is the simple truth of it. And if you're able to take leverage and automate it, so things that are high leverage tasks, you 
put into an automation thing. Like my entire client onboarding process is automated, right? That is, uh, that is very good. If you offload decently high leverage stuff like my video editing to a great editor, this is pretty good. Now people are going to make that argument of like, well, I don't have the money to do it. I did it by myself for three, like two and a half years. So yeah, I, I, I also had YouTube channels my entire time growing up. I did the work. He made a great point at the beginning of this video of like people just want to get away from doing the work. Honestly, that's what a lot of these morning routines sound like. It's like, yes, I do this, I do this. And while there are some good self-care things along the way, like I think a quick gratitude journal doesn't hurt because there are obviously studies that show that if you're more grateful, you end up being more happy. And you know, one of the greatest indicators of productivity is that you're joyous while you're doing the thing or you're enjoying doing the thing. So some of the things he, he isn't pointing out, and I will just stop and say like, there are some minor things that actually do help you. However, I do believe that right when you wake up, you don't need to necessarily get started like that. Those are the kind of things that maybe will help you push through the day or you can do the night before while you're in that recovery state post deep work. I think the morning actually might be one of the worst times to do a lot of those things. And he's making a great point about that here. That's it. What are the tasks that get us the most output? For example, I could make sales calls. That is going to be a one-to-one -one input of like, I do this effort and I get sales out of it. With that same level of effort, if I could go recruit a salesperson, which would take me a finite period of time, and then that person replaces that, my ongoing support for that person is going to be two, three hours a week. So I gain back 20 hours a week of prospecting in exchange for two to three hours a week plus money. And so the act of entrepreneurship is simply consistently making these trades of what can I buy my time back with, even to the point where you had an entire company leading to one person and that person talks to you if we were <laughs> wait a second wait a second wait a second can i can i see this image again my time back with even to the point where you had an entire company <laughs> that's a pyramid <laughs> i know he's not a pyramid scammer but bro that's that's a that's a pyramid company leading to one person and that person talks to you if we were to try and think of like the perfect morning routine we should think about the reverse of that which is what's the worst morning routine how could i create a morning routine that would make me the least effective one i would make it long as humanly possible number two i would have lots of steps and processes involved so that i could use up lots of mental energy before i could even start working number three is that i would become very very reliant on that thing if i don't get this one thing in then it means i cannot work you have to make your bed in order to become a millionaire the problem with that is that we're separate yes let's hear this argument i want this Separating fact from psychology if i make making my bed mean that i'm going to do the things that i said i'm going to do then it's super productive but it's not the making the bed that's the thing that's important it's the fact that i'm committed to doing the things that i said i'm going to do gurus will get on this superstition or this is an amazing picture but also Amazing point. It's all arbitrary. If you put, like I put more value on the fact that I'm sitting down at 4.45 in the morning and working. That's the same value that I'd put on making my bed if that's what I believe would be the thing. It's all about how you convince yourself what's actually important. That part of psychology is just true. Around these things that they do, but not describe the meaning that they've ascribed to the thing oh, I do this thing to establish discipline, then it's not the thing, it's the discipline, in which case you could replace the thing with any other thing, or you could just tell yourself you're disciplined and you don't need to prove it to yourself. The easiest way to disprove something is to say, let me find an instance where this doesn't exist and I still have the outcome. That's how you disprove something in like science. If there's a millionaire morning routine, then it would have to be the same thing that all millionaires do. You have to wake up early. I can tell you right now, plenty of millionaires don't wake up early. You have to have seven streams of income. All I have to do is find one person who doesn't have seven streams of income to show you that that's not true. Do you have to do real estate in order to become a millionaire? No. You have to be in software. You have to be in Web3. By the way, buddy, doing 70 million a year with janitorial services for big buildings. Boring ass shit. The anti-routine concept came from the fact that I get asked by so many people what my routine was because they thought there was some magic pill of how I got stuff done besides getting stuff done that somehow is going to make them confront the fact that they're not working because they don't want to work. You don't need to create some magical morning routine where you sing a flute, magical dance outside and sing in the rain and the journals and all the other shit. Like there's work to be done. And the question is, how quickly can I begin that work? That's it. The perfect routine would be you wake up and you immediately work because you've trained yourself to be able to do it. If you are one of these people who has a 90 minute morning routine before you start working, try waking up and walking straight over to begin work. Don't even check your phone. Yes, 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 yes. And let me guess, this is gonna be his morning routine. 
number of hours of work should increase. It is people who are like, I get more done if I have a morning routine. Cool. See if you can just compress the morning routine to take less time. Of the 10 things you do, remove one, see how you do. Remove two, see how you do. The fundamental equation of productivity, how much you do multiplied by how much leverage you have on the stuff you do. If we're defining those things as the equation for productivity, then the perfect morning routine should be one that maximizes the volume of work you do and the leverage that you create from the volume. And so for me, that looks like waking up, having a cup of coffee and getting to work and then ordering my day in the order in which I have the highest leverage activities to the lowest leverage activities. That is uh, what I figured it would be. That is perfect. I actually have a system and notion where you can leverage that opportunity and take whatever is the highest leverage task and do them first in order, literally based off of the system that I built within Notion. If you're interested on any of that kind of stuff, I am a Notion consultant, check that out. Alex, A1, A1 video, probably the best morning routine I've ever seen. It's It's been proven to do great things. Literally, the only difference between that and mine is like sometimes I drop and do like 80 pushups because one, you know, I'm yoked, you know, I'm trying to be the next Matt Diavella of productivity, but um, I'm not as, nearly as jacked as that guy. God, look at those biceps. However, you could also look at this video that'll help you improve your business, but I don't know, right here.